The response of the US leadership to the request by the International Criminal Court's chief prosecutor for the arrest warrants over Israel and Gaza has proven instructive. Panic, dishonesty, belligerence, menace. The stuff, in other words, of a flailing superpower, which has spent the 21st century apparently unaware that it's in a death spiral when it comes to its own global dominance, overwhelmingly because of the catastrophic decisions that it has made. Now, this involves sinister stuff. We'll come on to that. Firstly, I want to discuss President Joe Biden himself, who denounced the arrest warrant requests pertaining, of course, to Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, and uh, his defence minister, Yev Gallen, as outrageous, despite having previously welcomed the ICC's war crimes charges against Russia's Vladimir Putin. Now, let's just listen to Joe Biden here speaking at the Jewish Heritage Month event following the prosecutor's statement. Let me be clear. We reject the ICC's application for arrest warrants against Israeli leaders. Whatever these warrants may imply, there is no equivalence between Israel and Hamas. And it's clear Israel wants to all, do all it can to ensure civilian protection. But let me be clear. Contrary to allegations against Israel made by the International Court of Justice, what's happening is not genocide. We reject that. We will always stand with Israel and the threats against its security. Compounding the pain and the vicious surge of anti-Semitism around the world here in America as well. Well, firstly, I do think it's important to focus on the substance, but you can't listen to that and conclude there's a man who's on the ball. I mean, come on, let's just be serious about this. In any case, other than rejecting the warrants, he firstly promotes a recurring claim lodged against the prosecutor of an implied equivalence between Israel and Hamas. Now, first of all, before we rebut that on legal grounds, Benjamin Netanyahu himself, when he was denouncing the ICC decision, argued in his defence that he was democratically elected. So what? What's the relevance? I mean, first of all, Israel has power, despotic power, over millions of Palestinians who don't have any say over their future, or indeed who's in charge of the power occupying them at the moment, Benjamin Netanyahu. So claims about democracy there need to be refuted. The power over them exercised by Israel is a despotism in practice. But why does being democratically elected, why is that relevant? What's, it, what's the relevance to it, to whether or not you've committed war crimes? You either commit war crimes, you don't commit war crimes. The nature of how you achieve the power in which you then commit war crimes is not actually relevant at all. I know, actually, apologists for the slaughter of Gaza frequently raise the fact that Hamas was elected all the way back in 2006. They argue that basic facts on the basis of collective punishment. Obviously, it was an extremely long time ago and most of the Palestinian population have no say in that election. But in any case... Does that election mean Hamas gets to commit war crimes? I mean, there's no relevance here. I'm just going through this whole equivalence argument. Now, I, I would also, as I keep saying, as I've always emphasised, Hamas has committed serious war crimes, always been very clear about that. No cause on earth justifies war crimes and the killing of civilians. I would argue that Israel's crimes are much, much worse, not least because of asymmetry. That is, Israel is the occupying power, which for generations waged has waged war against the Palestinian people through ethnic cleansing, occupation, siege, apartheid, theft of land, illegal settlements. And by definition, the war crimes committed by Israel since 7th October are much worse than the, yes, terrible crimes, by the way, committed on that day. Obviously, far more slaughter and starvation, as well as terrible specific additional crimes of starvation. We could go on. Now, the angle they're going, they're coming from is how dare you suggest Israel is as bad as Hamas? This is a recurring objection. Germany's also said the same thing. But that isn't what's suggested here at all. The proposed warrants aren't about equivalence. It's not about comparing the two. It's about comparing their behaviour to the law. What are the actions of a particular party compared to what the law says is legal or not? It's just dishonesty by Joe Biden. Also, he's his point about the International Court of Justice. I mean, it hasn't accused Israel of genocide. Look, I mean, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure he knew what he was talking about there. Not least because it can't do that at this stage. That's a process which takes years. South Africa's lodged a case alleging genocide at the ICJ. The ICJ is considering that case. It is an alleged genocide at the ICJ. But the ICC prosecutor hasn't lodged genocide as a potential charge against Israel's leaders. He should have done. That's an omission. But why has Biden brought that up? What is he talking about? He then speaks about always standing with Israel. Yeah, we'd notice that. 
Joe, because that's why we're in this unfortunate situation of you having supplied the weapons, aid and diplomatic support to a state to enable it to behave with impunity, which is why the ICC has now been forced to step in because of the unbelievably grotesque crimes committed by the Israeli state. Now, before I mention the truly disturbing attempts to menace the ICC, I would note multiple statements by ICC signatory states, including crucially key allies of Israel. Australia said it respects the ICC and the important role it has in upholding international law. France says it supports the International Criminal Court, its independence and the fight against impunity in all situations. Belgium says crimes committed in Gaza must be prosecuted at the highest level regardless of their perpetrators. Belgium supports the work of the International Criminal Court. Even Germany, Israel's main European defender, has come out and refused to throw the ICC under a bus, despite a mealy-mouthed statement, which again goes on about equivalence. The UK government, on the other hand, just churned out a load of crap, but the US is behaving like a rogue state here. The US and the UK um, have defied the international consensus, and that needs to be made clear. Now, let's just talk about just sinister stuff. Earlier this month, the new brilliant media outlet Zetio, which I'm involved with, revealed that a key Republican, that key Republican senators had sent a letter to the ICC Chief Prosecutor Karen Khan warning him not to issue international arrest warrants, threatening severe sanctions if they did so. That included the likes of Tom Cotton of Arkansas, Florida's Mark Rubio and Ted Cruz of Texas. They say target Israel and we will target you, adding they will sanction your employees and associates and bar you and your family from the United States. Rather ominously, the letter concludes, you have been warned. Now, let's be clear, this is how gangsters behave and clearly declining empires. Now, following on from all of this, the Axios report says that the House Speaker, Mike Johnson, said that the House may vote on sanctions against the International Criminal Court for seeking an arrest warrant, of course, against Netanyahu and Yov Gallant. He says Congress is reviewing all options, including sanctions to punish the ICC and ensure its leadership faces consequences if they proceed. Just just waging war against an international court there because it had the temerity to uh, stand up to war crimes committed by a US ally. It's just it's just literal gangster behaviour. A vote could come as soon as this week, according to Axios, but it could only succeed, of course, with the support of Biden and the Democrats because of their control of the Senate. Now, the representative, Republican representative Chip Roy introduced a bill that allows the sanctioning of ICC officials who investigate US citizens or allies. Literally just, we're above the law, so are our allies. It's supported by nearly two dozen other Republicans. That includes... Um, the chair of the House Republican Con uh, Conference. Now, John Bolton, the utterly unhinged former national security advisor under Donald Trump, who left the Donald Trump administration because he was too extreme, basically he wasn't allowed to go around starting wars, said, I'm happy to see Congress moving towards imposing sanctions on the ICC. I propose this during my time as national security advisor. Bet you bloody did. We must dish out consequences on the ICC if it's going to come after the US and our allies, i.e. we can behave as we wish and so can our allies. All tremendously illegal, by the way, as Article 70 of the Rome Statute makes clear um, about offences against the administration of justice. The court shall have jurisdiction over the following offences against the administration of justice when committed intentionally. That's including impeding, intimidating or corruptly influencing an official of the court for the purpose of forcing or not or persuading the official not to perform or to perform improperly his or her duties retaliating against an official of the court prohibited on account of duties performed by that or another official. So ICC member states could actually be obliged in theory to take action against US politicians who try to take illegal actions against the court. Alarmingly, the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said at a Senate Foreign Affairs Committee he would work with Congress on an appropriate response to the proposed arrest warrants. Uh, but uh, that, uh, that decision, as you said, on so many levels... Uh, is totally wrongheaded, and um, we'll uh, be happy to work with uh, Congress, with this committee, uh, on an appropriate response. This same Lincoln was repeatedly and correctly interrupted by protesters who held him responsible for the mass slaughter of Gaza. People's Republic of China.
those protesters raise the example of Hind Raja. She was a six-year-old Palestinian girl slaughtered after trying to get help from the Palestine Red Crescent after her entire family was butchered by the Israeli military in a car, that is all her relatives in that car, before ambulance was sent and then itself blown up by the Israeli military. The paramedics killed and then Hind killed too. Hind Raja was six years old when the Israelis killed her. Hind Raja was six years old. Listen, you will be remembered as the butcher of Gaza. You will be remembered for murdering innocent Palestinians. Well, indeed. And here really are some crucial points. The US know it's implicated by definition in these terrible crimes. It supplied the arms, the weapons and the aid and the diplomatic support without which Israel could not have committed these heinous crimes for which its leaders now finally face being held to account for. This whole process will expose those crimes and indeed public opinion in the US has already drastically shifted against Israel and US complicity with more Americans than not now believing Israel is committing genocide. This is another calamitous blow to US power and they know it but this will only make it worse for them. The ICC case will now be used to build pressure to end the West criminal complicity in the grave horrors inflicted against the Palestinian people. And this lashing out is simply causing them more damage. And deep down, both Israel and its allies know it. That's why they're panicking. That's why they're lashing out. Please like and subscribe. Do leave your comments. Do share. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Help us take on the pro-war media patreon.com forward slash I'll speak to you soon.